guys welcome to another video I really appreciate you joining today uh, today I'm going to do uh, an initial unboxing and a first run impression video on the ASICS Magic Speed these shoes have been out for about a year so I'm very late to the game uh, doing them I really haven't owned a ASICS bought a new ASICS pair of shoes in like 12 or 13 years uh, I was a long time ASICS shoe user from probably 1993 or 1994 until 2009 uh, they, I ran in them almost exclusively in 2009 I made the transition to uh, a lower drop uh, low drop zero drop type shoes and I more of a four, four foot strike and I was looked more for shoes with a low drop and back in those days ASICS was primarily selling shoes with a 10 or 12 millimeter drop uh, and they had a narrow toe, toe foot forefoot I was looking for something with a wider forefoot so I ended up kind of migrating to other shoes there were a few ASIC shoes out there that worked that were there that would have worked for me that were their racer shoes their racing shoes that were uh, more like racing flats that were probably five millimeter drops six millimeter drops something like that uh, but they were still very nar narrow and curved and that just didn't meet the style of what I was trying to run so I basically migrated to other brands uh, in recent years though ASICS has been now has quite a variety of shoes with different drops and they've been getting some really good reviews so uh, I've been looking at them some but uh, hadn't bought a pair until now uh, the ASICS Magic Speed is a shoe that came out last year it's it's their trainer companion to their Meta Speed Sky which is their super shoe it has a half carbon plate uh, a plate in the front of the shoe it's meant to be a uh, the training companion uh, or tempo still a tempo type shoe kind of similar to when I go to the ultra world my vanish tempo is to the vanish carbon what this uh, this is the to the meta speed sky um, I decided to give them a try because uh, they're they're about to come out with the magic speed 2 which comes out in September so they've discounted the magic speeds the Magic Speed 1's uh, quite a few places. It was marked down at Left Lane Sports down to $84.99 and then they had a 30% off sale so I was able to get these for $59 and I thought that made it worth a try. That and they were a five millimeter drop and I, I really usually like shoes between zero and six millimeters so they fet, met that as well. Uh, that being said these shoes are not don't have as huge a stack height as a lot of the uh, big carbon fiber shoes, super shoes. Um, I've actually read some conflicting reports, but I believe these are 29 millimeters in the heel and 24 in the forefoot. Uh, I have also read some things that say that they're 34 in the heel and 29 in the forefoot, but regardless, they're in a uh, five millimeter drop and they're not as hugely, sta uh, huge stack height like a the Nike Alpha Fly or the uh, Saucony Endorphin Pros. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd give them a try and uh, I thought I couldn't beat the price. Uh, they sell new for like $150, but like I said, I got them for $59. The new Magic Speed 2s that are coming out, as I understand, uh, these use their Flight Foam Blast midsole material, which is pretty soft. But uh, they have the new Magic Blast, I mean, the new Flight Foam Blast Plus, which is now in like the Nova Blast, which they say is even softer, uh, which is even softer and maybe even a little bit more bouncy. So, but these have the older foam. The uh, Magic Speed 2 will have the Flat Foam Blast 2. I mean, the Flat Flight Foam Blast Plus. Uh, I also read that the <clears throat> Whereas I don't see the full specs on the Magic Speed 2, uh, it's supposed to have a 7 millimeter drop and a higher stack height. Um, anyway, these shoes come in at 7.9 ounces in a men's size 9, um, which is a, a nice lightweight shoe. Uh, I'm going to check them real 
right now in my men's size 11 and a half. It's coming in at 9.28, so it is a, a nice light shoe. Um, like I said, it has the Flight Foam Blast midsole. It has their Ahar rubber, which I kind of hadn't used um, ASIC shoes in quite a few years, but their Ahar rubber was always great. It, it gave good grip and uh, lasted a long time. At least, uh, I'm not sure it was always the greatest on wet surfaces, but any other surface, it's great and grippy. We'll see if that's still the case. I'm sure they've probably made some improvements to it as well over the years. But uh, I can tell this upper is really lightweight and thin. The tongue is like wafer thin. It's really not much more than a piece of material. So we'll have to be a little careful and see if the uh, lacing, if I can feel the laces on top of my shoe. It does have the hole to hold the uh, tongue in place that goes through your laces. Um, it is not gusseted, so hopefully it'll stay in place good. We'll see. Uh, I can tell it's very thin through the collar. The collar is extremely thin. Uh, it does have some padding in the heel that hopefully will lock it in place. Um, I have read that they are a little bit narrower than a lot of shoes. But um, I usually kind of size up. Uh, I wear, in the old days, I used to wear A6 11s or 11 and a halfs. I went with 11 and a halfs because I'm now more used to a little bit wider forefoot and was hoping these would still lock down and work. So uh, these use a, have a pretty curved sole uh, and the stiff forefoot due to the, the plate, carbon fiber plate. Uh, they call that their guide sole technology, which is supposed to reduce ankle flexion and provide shock absorbing landing zone for less fatigue in your leg muscles. So we'll just have to see. Um, anyway, that's about it. I'm going to try them on and go for my initial little run. I'm really not going to put up this video. Tomorrow I'm running a 5K and I'm planning to run these. So I will give the report on my first run impressions following the 5K that I run in them tomorrow. Uh, other than that, um, I'll check in later. Bye. Okay, guys, so I just finished the Trinity 5000, my first real run in the ASICS, ASICS Magic Speeds that I got. They actually felt really good. Uh, I've heard that they're a little more firm than most super shoes, but I, I just found them pretty cushy. I didn't. Uh, they're, they're probably a little firmer than some of the super shoes, but they're not not harsh at all. I don't feel the plate near as much as I do in, say, the original uh, Saucony Endorphin Pros. So uh, I found them very comfortable. Uh, I did run my slowest 5K of the summer, I think, tonight, but I don't. That wasn't the shoe's fault. I took off the first mile feeling pretty good. And, ran that mile fairly quick uh, and then I just kind of died so <laughs> but uh I said I ran felt good running them the first mile fast and then they were still comfortable the rest of the way so the shoes were great now the I will say the upper is very thin but it's very breathable in the 95 degree heat that we were running in today uh, no problem there uh, I was worried a little bit about the thinness of the tongue uh, when I tied them, I figured out you could feel the laces, but if you uh, just leave them just a tiny bit looser, no problem at all. So that's that's what I did, and I was comfortable. They feel locked down well. My heel didn't slip. Uh, I said they're a little bit more firm than my Atreyu the Artist. They're full fiber, carbon fiber plate, uh, but uh, very comfortable. I enjoyed them. Uh, anyway, that's just my first run impressions. Uh, the grip was good on these trails, but I mean, it was dry today, so most shoes would be. Uh, that's really all I got today. I'll, I'll come back with another review video on these shoes when I got more miles on them and get an idea how they might wear and try them for more different types of runs. But that's it for today.